Welcome to the first video in this series. Let's start by talking about limits. There are a few different methods you can use to find the limit of a function. The first method is direct substitution. For example, if we want to find the limit as x approaches 5 of this polynomial equation, we can simply let x equal 5 and solve the expression. As long as you get an answer that is defined, you've found your limit. In the second method, you start by factoring, then simplifying your function before you can plug in your value. Let's work with an example where you'll have to use this method. Here we have a polynomial equation divided by another polynomial equation, and we want to find the limit of the rational function as x approaches 4. It is important to remember that if an equation like this can be factored, then factor it. In this case, we get an x minus 4 in the numerator and in the denominator, which cancel out. Now you can plug in the 4 for x and find out what your limit is. The lesson here is that whenever you see a rational function, check to see if it can be factored. Sometimes you'll try one or both of these methods, but you find yourself stuck because your answer is in an indeterminate form. If you come across a situation like this and you see a radical in the equation, you can try method 3. These methods take advantage of the conjugate to rationalize the function and make it easier to substitute. This will all make more sense with an example. Here's a problem with a radical in the numerator. If we plug in a 3, we end up getting a 0 in the numerator and in the denominator, and that's our indeterminate form. Notice that square root of 3x plus 7 minus 4 looks an awful lot like a minus b. So multiplying by its conjugate, square root of 3x plus 7 plus 4 will get rid of the square root. Let's start the problem together. Multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. You'll see that we get 3x plus 7 minus 16 in the numerator. Now challenge yourself. Pause this video and see how far you can get this problem, and then come back. Did you find that reducing the numerator further will give you 3 times x minus 3? And that cancels with x minus 3 in the denominator. All you're left to do is plug in your x and solve the equation. And there's your solution. There are a few other methods and tricks like expanding the function or finding a common denominator and even using trig identities to solve more challenging problems. If you'd like to see videos of any of these types of limits or have a question about what we just worked on, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to this channel.